Hello, good evening, students. Today, I'm going to present you a branch of spectroscopy, which is infrared spectra. This is also called as infrared spectroscopy. I'm Dr. Ram Gopal. What surprise is there inside this topic? What the student expect? Spectroscopy, as the name indicates, spectra means colors and scopy means measurement, measurement of colors. What, what does this exactly mean? This is just like a treasure house, a gift pack, wherein you can find out almost the function group or any number of function groups contained inside an organic molecule. This is such a powerful tool. As I already have told you, spectroscopy is a study of measure, study or measurement of various colors. To be precise, it is various wavelengths. These wavelengths fall in different regions of electromagnetic radiation. One may be IR, infrared, the other may be visible, the other may be microwave region, and several other, several other regions of spectra are there. In the spectroscopy, generally, we see the unseeable. Using electromagnetic radiation as a probe to obtain information about atoms and molecules that are too small to see. Here we use electromagnetic radiation as already told. Spectroscopy is the interaction of electromagnetic radiation with the matter. What is electromagnetic radiation? It is composed of a electrical component and magnetic component, both being perpendicular to each other and the propagation of the wave is also perpendicular to the electric and magnetic fields. So all three components are mutually perpendicular to each other, electric field, magnetic field, and also the direction of propagation of wave, electromagnetic wave. Can, could you name an electromagnetic radiation other than what I have told? Yes, there is one more, which is visible light. The light which enables us to see, to study, to talk, to track, So when there is no more light, you need a straight light. Sometimes in jungles, you don't have lights, straight lights. Even moonlight will help you. Even stars will help you. Electromagnetic radiation is propagated at the speed of light. Any electromagnetic radiation is propagated at the velocity of light through vacuum. It is an oscillating wave. When I speak about a wave, here is the wave. A wave has a crest, a trough, and continues successively. It will have a trough, a crest, a trough, a crest. Now, the waves are generally characterized by two important aspects. One is wavelength, the other is frequency. Wavelength is the property of a, any wave, if, even if it is an electromagnetic wave. It's the distance between two successive crests or two successive troughs. It is equal. That it is called wavelength denoted by lambda. There is one more wave property. It is a frequency. Here it is written as U, but it is mu, N U mu. 
it is not even v it is mu so what is a frequency a propagation of wave frequency is the number of waves passing through a point per unit time which is generally taken in seconds so it is the number of waves passing through a given point suppose there is a slit here and the wave fronts are going 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 you just count the waves that pass through this point or slit per unit time that is per second since this happens to be a longer wave because wavelength is more it will it can accommodate that it can have less frequency because less number of waves would pass through a given point if the wavelength decreases the number of waves passing through the point will be more hence frequency increases this leads us to a corollary that frequency and wavelength both are the properties of a waves and they are inversely proportional you can see here lambda is inversely proportional to the frequency and when you remove the proportionality and introduce is equal to and just rearrange it lambda v is equal to some constant the product of wave length and frequency of an electromagnetic radiation is always a constant and this constant value is called velocity of light you all know that light or any electromagnetic radiation travels with the velocity of light which is 3 lakh kilometers per second from this you can draw so many relations energy is proportional to frequency e is equal to h nu so frequency will give you energy absorbance and then new is same as c by lambda so when you introduce or substitute c by lambda in place of new you get e is equal to h c by lambda if you remove the is equal to and planck's constant and replace it with the proportional t we'll get e is inversely proportional to v energy decreases with increase in wavelength this is a reverse phenomena to frequency two oscillators one electromagnetic radiation and the other oscillator right. we have to consider is an organic material in which in the molecule bonds are oscillating or vibrating so this oscillating bonds will interact with the electromagnetic oscillating wave subjected to a condition when their energies are equal or approximately equal which means wavelengths are approximately equal and frequencies are approximately equal. this condition has to be obliged the energies are different they will not strongly interact some electromagnetic radiation ranges radio wave it is given in cycles per second which is frequency and for 4 to 10 or 12 range radio waves and for it 10 power 11 to 10 power 14 this is our subject of interest there are several electromagnetic radiation ranges audio radio micro infrared visible ultraviolet x ray gamma and cosmic rays these are all different regions of electromagnetic radiation ranges audio wave is an electromagnetic radiation radio wave is an electromagnetic radiation micro infrared visible so on and so forth p e is equal to h nu you could see if you could see this from a to c the order is increasing frequency because cosmic rays are the 
areas having most frequency that is most energetic rays that's why they're able to penetrate outer space and enter into our earth's atmosphere cosmic rays are most energetic then gamma rays they are less energetic than cosmic but more energetic than x-rays and we consider x-rays as very strong rays just you can understand how strong are gamma rays and how strong are cosmic rays ultraviolet visible infrared this is our subject of interest microwave radio and audio now the reverse order is increasing order of wavelength so this is increasing order of frequency left to right right to left increasing order of wavelength audio waves we have highest wavelength and as cosmic rays we have least wavelength now our infrared radiation range falls already we have told that it hurts but the hurt is difficult one and so we convert it into wavelength and then from there to wave number we are not even using frequency we are using wave number that is actually called uh, denoted by new bar due to paucity of a global tools i could not change this excuse me for that so its range is 4000 to 600 cm inverse so inverse of lambda lambda units that is wavelength units are converted into wave number units centimeter inverse and what is wave number it is also another wave property it is the number of waves that can be accommodated in 1 cm of length so this is expressed in cm inverse the unit is cm inverse for our infrared radiation range it falls in the range 600 to 4000 cm inverse so since the unit is in cm inverse the scale is from higher end to the lower end these free the lower value because the value is often misleading without unit these frequencies match the frequencies of covalent bond stretching and bending vibrations so now we are going to know that there will be two kinds of vibrations in molecules the vibrations need not all always be compressions and expansions this frequency is matched with frequency is equivalent bond stretching and bending vibrations so frequent uh, the it need not always always be a stretching it can also be a bending vibration infrared spectroscopy can be used to find out the nature of a covalent bond what type of bonds are present that is whether it is a c double bond o bond or a c c bond or a c double bond c bond a single bond or a double bond the oxygenated bond and also on the structural information may be drawn as concluded from my aspect of study next slide in general the topology of a ir instrumentation would be ir source followed by a sample and connected through lenses the sample is connected to prism and also connected through lenses and the prism is connected to the de detector through lenses this detector is attached to a computer screen ir spectrum is often a graph of percentage transmission on the y axis and 
square number on the x-axis, 4,000 to 500. The higher number, higher digit to the left, because units are centimeter inverse, can you make a note? And this is the signal. The length of the signal is called intensity of the signal. Let us also understand about intensity of signal. Let us try to highlight what we have learned till now. IR spectroscopy provides information about the vibrations of functional groups in a molecule. As we are saying, functional groups present in a molecule can be deduced from an IR spectrum. There is also one more thing to this. Two important parameters. The frequency of the signal, U, which is represented by actually wave number, and the intensity of the signal, that is signal length, that's what I was speaking second earlier. What structural features of molecule do V and I depend on? Let us try to probe. You know that air spectroscopy can identify functional groups. It can be an ether group, an aldehyde, a ketone, a carboxylic group, an ester group, an amine group, or an amide group. Or it can be as simple as an alcohol or a phenol having OH group and benzene nucleus or polynuclear hydrocarbon or it can be a fluorochlorobromone ionosubstituted compound. An organic molecule may have one or oh, many of these functional groups. Several times organic molecules are as large it can be as large as proteins. Now, when you want to study IR, you should know about the masses, the atoms, and the springs that connect them. This is a mathematical approach. Then the springs does not connect them to atoms. Atoms are connected to bonds. What are bonds? They are attractive, attractive forces. They are connected through attractive forces in reality. But let us take a model. It's a wherein the atoms of the atomic molecule, its point masses are connected by springs. Look here. This is the original scenario wherein Two point charges are connected through a spring, a frictionless spring. Now, when you try to compress it, this is compressive. Now, when you try to expand it, it expands. Then it retains its original position. Now, there is a law behind it, which you call Hooke's law. What does it say? It says that the restoring force is always acting in the opposite direction because the negative sign indicates opposite direction. You are compressing and it is elongating and coming to its original position. So there is some restoring force which is acting opposite, oppositely to the displacement. This is negative displacement. This is positive displacement. This is equilibrium displacement or equilibrium bond length. So here it is expansion, here it is compression. So the restoring force is always proportional to the displacement of the point charges from the equilibrium position. But the restoring force will always act in the opposite direction. Hence F is proportional to minus X. If you remove the proportionality, you can introduce it spring constant or force constant, then the equation is F is equal to minus Kx. This is also called a stretching constant. How does the frequency depend on? It depends on spring strength. 
and you consider the model, the spring strength will define the frequency. And also, the frequency is dependent on reducer mass. This reduced force. Mathematically, it is when there are two point charges interconnected to a spring. When the point charges are M1 and M2, the reducer mass would be 1 by M1 plus M2. 1, 1 by M1 plus 1 by M2, which is equal to M1 plus M2 by M1 M2. Why do you use a reduced mass? Because two point charges, two unknowns, is a problematic issue. You make it a single unknown. You combine them, you make the reduced mass. Generally, mass of the largest atom is considered representing the reduced mass. Higher, higher stretching frequencies, what do they depend on? Directly on the strength of the bonding between the two atoms, inversely on the reduced mass of the Generally, the frequency of oscillation is dependent on the strength of the uh, stretchable spring. In real case, the strength of the bond and is inversely proportional to the reducing mass of the two atoms. So, generally you know that vibrational frequency decreases with increasing mass. By general observation also, you can come to the conclusion that as mass increases, the freedom of oscillation decreases. So, it will increase with increasing bond strength and decreasing mass. What is bond strength? Bond strength is bound order. Let us take, for example, C, single bond C, whose bond strength is 350. C, double bond C, its bond strength is 600. It is expressed in kilojoule per mole. The C, triple bond C is not depicted here. Its bond strength is 840 kilojoule per mole. And you know the bond order. C is single bond C, bond order is 1. C double bond C bond order is 2. And C triple bond C bond order is 3. The frequencies will vary from 1000 to 1600 to 2200, which proves that as the bond order increases, that is, as the bond strength increases, frequency increases. This is for a fixed and for same reducing mass. It has both are both the point charges M1 and M2 are same. In this case also M1 and M2 are same. Hence the reduced mass will be same. There is also a quantum mechanical approach. Classical approach is always followed by quantum mechanical approach. Because you cannot complete your discussion without the quantum mechanical approach. You can uh, study this in your postman radiation to a greater extent. Quantum mechanical approach will consider incident infrared light in the form of photon when it is incident on the axial molecule, a dipolar molecule, it is vibrationally excited, and some of the light is transmitted. only the natural frequency the, the frequency that matches is observed let us see it in another example before that there's all the molecules observing ir light are ir active that may not be the, re the case in reality there should be a change in the dipole moment. You can see HCl, the case of HCl. This is positive, means hydrogen. This is negative, means chlorine. The dipole is interconnected in this. They became two different poles. So there is change, a shift in the dipole moment. Again, reversal, again, reversal. 
So this is along the sine wave, it is reversal. Hence, the greater the change in dipole moment during a vibration, the higher the intensity of absorption of a photon. So the necessary condition for an organic molecule to show IR activity is that its vibrations must have a change in dipole moment during IR transitions or during IR absorption. Actually, IR absorption will lead to vibrational transitions. Hence, I am calling it as IR transitions. What is the intensity of an IR signal of oxygen or nitrogen or nitrogen? They are, they are all symmetric molecules, hence the dipole movements does not vary. And they do not show IR radiation. These are not greenhouse gases. Now, does carbon dioxide absorb IR light? Yes, carbon dioxide absorbs infrared light, but not all vibrations. Now there is one more further question. In a molecule, does all the vibrations are IR active? No, it depends on whether there is change in dipole moment or not. The symmetric stretch, for example, the symmetric stretching of C double bond O double bond O, that is carbon dioxide, is IR inactive. Whereas, the asymmetric stretch, whereas the asymmetric stretch is IR active because there will be change in dipole moment with respect to carbon dioxide. It is not actually displayed here. No dipole is generated in case of symmetric stretch. Dipole is generated with respect to asymmetric stretch. That is a one side compression and one side expansion. This is that is called asymmetric stretch. In such a case only, the dipole is generated, hence asymmetric CO2 stretching is IR active. One more corollary question. It should have a higher stretching frequency, carbon monoxide, CO plus or CO minus, and why? We already know the rule. Carbon monoxide will have bond order of three. CO plus and CO minus maybe will be having 2.5 bond order. And carbon monoxide will be showing higher frequency. The higher the bond order, the stronger the bond, and the higher the frequency for the air stretch. You can see here carbon monoxide, the molecular orbital energy diagram, energy. Okay, the diagram is not shown, but molecular orbitals are shown. This is bonding molecular orbital, sigma bonding, pi bond, 2 plus 4, 6 by 2, antibonding. Electrons are not there in antibonding orbitals. 6 minus 0 by 2 is 3. Here, 2 plus 3 by 2. Pi by 2 is 2.5. There is an electron in the antibonding orbital. We have to subtract 6 minus 1, 5 by 2, which is again 2.5. Then carbon monoxide will have highest stretching frequency. Mm -hmm. Question has been posed and the answers have been drawn. They are searching frequencies of two bonded atoms. What does they what does the frequency depend on? Strength strength, that is bond strength, reduced mass. That has been the conclusion has been drawn.
these are some more conclusions this is controversial leave it here let us take this but a cc bond the reduced mass is approximately equal to the mass of a carbon atom it is 12 ir spectroscopy will help you to find out the nature of a functional group present in all such molecules they are very small molecules the region of infrared spectroscopy as i already told you is from 4000 to 600 or 625 it depends on transitions between vibrational energy states it includes stretchings and bendings. We all know that uh, stretching vibrations for single bonds, CC single bond and CH single bond. When SPCH is written, the carbon is attached to another carbon through triple bond. So it is a triple bonded carbon and the CH bond belongs to that. SP2CH is, it is a doubly bonded carbon. And SP3CH indicates it is a single bonded carbon, which is attached to hydrogen. So these are three different types of the CH stretchings. You can see their strengths. The, the strongest among them is a triple bonded C versus and hydrogen 3310 to 3320 then doubly bonded c ch which is 3000 to 3100 then singly bonded carbon hydrogen which is 2850 to 2950 there is also sp2 carbon you can Take the example of an sp2 carbon for a ketone we can see double bond O here it can be single bond but C double bond may be there only single bond is shown here so it can be C double bonded C carbon also in this case carbon Attach it to oxygen. This stretching we are considering. So, so the carbon is sp2 carbon. There are two cases, as I have already told. It can be a ketonic or an aldehyde carbon, or it can be a carbon attached to another carbon to double bond. Its stretching vibration falls at 1200 centimeter inverse. sp3 CO bond. So this is. This can be an ether bond. COC bond like that. So 1020 to 1200. It is lower than an SP2CO bond. For some more stretching vibrations, C double bond C stretch, stretching vibration falls in the range 1620 to 1680. C triple bond C 2100 to 2200. C triple bond N. 20 to 40 to 20 to 80. Stretching vibrations, carbonyl group, aldehydes and ketones. The stretching vibration range falls uh, 1710 to 1750. For carboxylic acids, there will, be, there will be a slight decrease because in carboxylic acids, there will be an OH group and not an alkyl group. Both groups in aldehydes or uh, ketones are flanked by alkyl groups, whereas in carboxylic group, one of the valence is fulfilled by means of OH uh, hydroxyl group. And there will be change in the dynamics of stretching. There is a decrease in stretching. This can be discussed at a later stage why the stretch, stretching has decreased. Okay, if you have any doubt at the moment, I can tell you that the OH and the C double bond O will form 
an intramolecular bond which reduces the free stretching frequency. Acid and hydrides, there is hike, and two signals are formed. Both have higher frequencies, and in a hydride, CO bond is protected because there will be internal bonding due to a second carboxyl group, but the CO group will be intact. And also this will be further enhances the strength of the bond and hence acid and hydrates will absorb at a higher frequency. Esters somewhat greater than aldehydes and ketones because esters have an OR group in, in place of the OH group. OR means R, R is an alkyl group. It is an electron donating group. Hence, the scenario changes. This is different from a carboxylic acid. Amides, again, there will be intermolecular hydrogen bonding. Hence, decrease in the stretch, stretching frequency. Let us see some of the bending vibrations. CH double bond CH. Bending vibration falls in the range 910 to 990. Suppose a di-substituted alkene is there and one terminal CH2OP is there. Then in such a scenario, the stretching frequency is very pinpointed. It is 890. These values are to be remembered by students, by you people every time. They will help you. You can use a pencil and write them down. S is and a trans. See how much variation is there. A trans can be identified by difference. So when cis and trans are provided to you, you can find out the bend from the binding vibrations, which is cis and which is trans. For the bending vibrations for Substituted benzenes are benzene derivatives. For mono substituted benzenes, there will be two signals, two bending vibrations in the range 732 to 770 and 690 to 710. And after the substituted benzenes, you'll get only one bending vibrational signal. This is this also you should remember. An ortho substituted benzene will give only a single bending vibrational uh, signal. A metadise substituted will give two signals, whereas a paradise substituted will give a single. So ortho and para will give only a single signal among the derivatives of benzene, substituted derivatives of benzene. So this is only about the bendings and stretchings and their position with respect to wave member. In a hexane, you'll have the characteristic C double bond C, which is found at around 3300 like that. And the bend is found, a bending vibration in between 1200 to 600, 1600. For a tertiary butyl benzene, ARH stretch, that is the uh, aromatic CH stretch, will be in the range 3000. It is greater than a double bond, but less than a a triple bond and here it is mono substituted benzene the bending will be in between 800 1600 the range is there it's a huge range it, it falls around 
Stretching vibrations, OH in alcohol cities, 3200 to 3600. In OH group, belonging to carboxylic group, the stretching vibration will decrease. As I have already told, there will be intermolecular hydrogen bonding. And it means there is also intermolecular hydrogen bonding. Hence, they will show little lower frequencies than alcohols to hexanol it is a it is an alcohol so what is stretch you can find it 3600 and ch stretch at 2800 this is 2 hexanone it's a ketone the CO stretch is at 1750 and the CH stretch is at approximately 3000 thank you students I hope I am clear to whatever I heard I have discussed it till now I'll continue the class tomorrow thank you and good night